Good afternoon, here I am at Holy Trinity Church in Wensley in Yorkshire. Now, my visit to Wensley is not going very well, I have to say. Um, I looked at my Pevsner while we were having lunch, which I keep in my camera bag, and just um, as I was getting out of the car, I um, didn't sit my camera bag up again when I took my Pevsner out, and consequently my a uh, 15 year old camera has gone and fallen on the floor and my lens has smashed, which is a bit of a disaster. So you might have uh, limited photograph photography capabilities for me uh, for the foreseeable future. Anyway, onto this video and we're in Holy Trinity in Wensley, which is a real treasure house uh, of a church in Wensleydale, named after the place, of course. It's a rather nice uh, late 13th century building. Lots of space, but not a lot of light. It's a very dark interior. Coming to the West End to look east towards the chancel. Now, what interesting features are there here? Well, if we head down the North Isle, straight in front of us, is this, which is the Scroop family pew. Now, it's 17th century, but it's been made out of an early 16th century Parklow screen, which is said to have come from Easeby Abbey, not that distant uh, from here. One paid for by the Scroop family. And it's very flamboyant and elaborate indeed. Um, some Scroop armorials on the bottom there. Um, inscriptions to the family. Looking up, absolutely fantastic flamboyant tracery there. And another inscription along the top rail. And it continues inside as well. So let's step up into the pew. And there's more bits of this Parklow screen here against the north wall. It certainly doesn't belong here. It's stuff that's been salvaged and reused for this pew. Let's say possibly from Easeby Abbey, it is thought. And here's the door, which has been nailed shut. And it has the Scroop coat of arms above it. really is a glorious thing. There are bits of colour and bits of gilding still surviving. Look at that finial there. So it is quite a tremendous survival from a monastic context. And here's the 17th century family pew. A couple of very comfortable boxes. really is rather fun. And then if we come out of here, there's an incised slab set into the wall here to a couple of the sons of a Lord Scroop. A couple of bits of cross slab. And then there's this curious thing in the aisle here. This little box, it's a poor box now, it has a poor box attached to the front of it, but it appears to be a bit of 15th or 16th century furniture. A bit of panel tracery in the front. What on earth is it? Well, we've no idea, it has a door on this side, which has got a lock on it. Various things have been suggested. Again, it's been suggested that it might be monastic spoil, um, that it's perhaps a sacrament house, or a tabernacle, or even a reliquary. But no one really knows. But it's a fascinating curiosity. Oh, sorry about the pink file box. That doesn't really 
set off that lovely bit of 16th century woodwork. Okay, so back into the nave again. Past my broken camera. There's an enormous incised slab here in the centre of the nave floor. Now I'm hoping you'll be able to see this and the light doesn't blur it out. But it's up on the wall here are a number of wall paintings. And you can see there the, the legs of uh, a wall painting of the three living and the three dead. So you've got the skeletal legs of the three dead on the left hand side and two of uh, the figures of the, um, the living on the other side, 14th century. And there's another 14th century wall painting uh, on the other side of this window too. And then on the piers. So on this eastern pier of the North Isle, there are scraps of wall paintings. Appears to be primarily decorative. Uh, I can see a hand there. What is the subject matter? I don't think we can work it out. It appears to be a figure here. So that's rather lovely. And the same on the other side, on the south side, a bit more pigment there on this pier. This to be a figure with a halo it's difficult to work out what they are, they're so fragmentary. Okay, and then into the chancel, through a very plain and rather restored uh, 15th century uh, root screen. And there are some really rather fine bench ends here, the elaborate poppy head, a wyvern, and an armorial panel on it of this groups. And we wonder if this is, again is monastic spoil. I'm always a bit dubious when people say that uh, things have come, come from monasteries, but um, I think in this case that might well be the case and again the second one here and there are I think six or seven of these lovely bench ends one here with a strange creature what on earth is that oh it's rather sweet looking bear that's very nice look at that lovely bear and the fronts are also old here too. An eagle on this. And then to the other side, there are just a couple more. And again, another old front to this. Honor et gloria, the inscription says. Honor et gloria. The strange creature, what is that? Is this a, a rabbit, perhaps? Don't know what that one is there. If you know what these are. Put your answers in the comments box below. And what appears to be a white heart, a chained white heart with a crown around its neck, which was of course is a symbol for King Richard II. And then into the sanctuary and there's a very very lovely sedilia here 
But I'm on the zoom, aren't I here? Let's zoom out, then you might be able to see things better. It's a rather nice sedilia here with dog tooth decoration around it. And a piscina. And then, which I think is the pièce de résistance in this church, we have this. The monumental brass to Sir Simon de Wensley, who died in the 1390s, but whose brass appears to be of the 1360s. And one of a series of brasses that appears to have been produced by a Flemish engraver. So it's a very, very fine piece indeed. It's difficult to see because of the light is currently on his face, which is rather frustrating. But let's have a little zoom in there. You can see his head supported by two, on a pillow with, by two angels really is a fantastic piece of engraving his arms crossed over him he's got the chalice of a priest dressed in full eucharistic vestments beautiful decoration on the apparel of his alb and two little dogs at his feet it's a very lovely thing indeed so looking west along the full length of the church really is a very beautiful church this and those bench ends those 15th century late 15th early 16th century bench ends i'm inclined to think they're late 15th century i do wonder actually if they do belong here and aren't monastic spoil i'm always as i say dubious when people say oh this and that has been removed from a monastery it often hasn't so really are very fine bench ends indeed So one last walk towards the west. Past the Scroop family pew with its 16th century park close. And quickly down into the south aisle where there is a 17th century font, late 17th century font with a late 17th century cover topped with an acorn. So this is dated 1662. So the year that the Book of Common Prayer is published, the year after the restoration of the monarchy a lot of fonts were destroyed, or some fonts were destroyed in the 17th century during the Commonwealth, and presumably this is a replacement for a font removed in the 17th century. Though why it would have been removed here when so much else survives? And one look east again, towards the top of the North Isle, and the Scroop family pew, and that salvaged Parklow screen, perhaps from Easby. So this is Holy Trinity Church, in Wensley in North Yorkshire. Thanks very much for watching.